Oh, add yourself to the stage, Gilbert. What are you doing? <laughs> hey, now it's Brace for Impact, and I'm your host, Mike Gilbert, and I'm going solo on that ass, but it's still the same. We're talking a TNA slam anniversary, and uh, what a show it was. Uh, 4,000 strong in the Verdun Auditorium in uh, Montreal, Quebec, Canada, or Montreal, as they were saying uh, there it's their, in their French accents. Uh, and uh, yeah, man, it was a, it was a, it was a fun show. Uh, I am curious as to what everybody thought of the main event because I found the main event. I, I keep saying the word weird. I don't want to say it was good. I also don't want to say it was bad. It was just weird. The booking is head scratching. I don't quite understand it. I don't know what they're doing. Uh, I I feel like um, they did some good stuff in it, and I really like the Josh heel turn, but I also feel like, they wasted it because he didn't win. <laughs> so it's like he he has this big character heel turn, and uh, and then he immediately gets pinned. So I I don't know. I like it just doesn't make sense to me. Um, like I said, I'm not I'm not saying it was bad, but it legit doesn't make sense to me. Um, the 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 moose thing, the moose thing. Uh, let me let me speak on that. So him getting pinned early in the match, if he's not going to retain the world title, I, I kind of like that because it builds excitement because you are you are telling the audience that you're about to have a title change. And that was, uh, I think it was Rovert on Twitter, but he said that they did the um, the the Taz versus, uh, man, who, who was in that match? I want to say it was Taz versus like Mike Awesome and Masato Tanaka in ECW. And this was right before Taz was heading to uh, WWE. They pinned him first. And um, in the elimination match, and then uh, and then that that actually built some excitement. So Tommy Dreamer's book in the show, which is why it was overbooked for the most part in uh, some of the key matches, but um, uh, it did build some excitement. So now I'm like, okay, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Um, and uh, and it did all that. But anyway, uh, I'm I'm gonna um, I'm gonna get to the chat. Uh, everybody, thank you for being here. Um, I, uh, I really do appreciate you. Let me give a shout out to my Patreon subscribers. Um, I got a chance to spend like an hour with you guys this morning on uh, my Brace for Impact show that is typically, um, we, we do the show um, they meet on Saturday mornings for the Patreon audience. And uh, this morning was no different. I woke up, uh, <laughs> I was live right at 6 a.m. And uh, I did a full recap of this week's Impact. So, um, But that is not going to be released to the YouTube. That was just for the Patreon audience. So if you guys want to check that out, head to patreon.com slash the Mike and JD show. I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you for uh, for being a, a Patreon subscriber. Thank you for supporting the show. Um, and uh, if you guys are just uh, tuning in, this is your first time here at Brace for Impact. Welcome. Thank you for being here. Um, I, I uh, do a show every single week. And then of course I release clips all throughout the week for everybody right here on the Mike and JD show YouTube channel. So thank you guys for being here. Um, also, if this is your first, uh, if this is your first time being here, I got to bring up the shirt and, uh, our boy altered the squirrel, uh, said it first. He was the first one to notice, but I am rocking my custom design, my custom made big con t-shirt. Um, and you guys would be must be wondering why why would anybody in their right mind be wearing a big con t-shirt because big con stinks like why would someone wear that and the answer is because i idiot um made a bet with the audience that if tna would get over 3000 fans in this uh, verdun auditorium um that i would buy a big con t-shirt now the only problem was I, I you know, and I, I guess I should have known that PCO was going to hit the ground the way he did, <laughs> and got all the local media involved. And Speedball did his part too, but it was mostly PCO. PCO is the guy who filled this arena up. Um, he uh, he you know he got on the ground. He he went out there and did one of the best. Um, I gotta say one of the best locally promoted wrestling shows uh, for a small company that I've ever seen, and uh, and he he did an excellent job. And he really got out there and got the people to the show, and they were able to get to about 4,000 people. I don't know what the final count is. I don't know if that number will ever get released, but 4,000 is the number that everybody seems to be going with. So uh, so that uh, he did a great job with that. He made me eat my words. Um, and uh, you know what? I'm happy to do so. When I talk shit and somebody is able to throw it back in my face, um, especially a company like TNA, who I openly root for, uh, I, you know, I... 
I am biased when it comes to TNA. I, I won't be biased as far as the quality of the show, but when it comes to like their success and wanting them to succeed, I, I very much am on the side of wanting them to succeed, even though it seems at time I'm pretty tough on them, but I'm always tough on people that want to be great. And I think that's important. And I was tough on some of the TNA roster tonight, and I'm going to continue to be, and that's that's always going to happen. Um, but I got people in my life who are tough on me too, and they they make me want to be better versions of myself, and I think that's a good thing. Uh, as long as you don't you know cross the line and just be offensive, you know we can all have fun, we can all talk shit, uh, we can all be tough on each other, and that's a and I think that's a really good thing. So, um, but yeah, I am a rock in the Big Con T-shirt. TNA doesn't sell a Big Con T-shirt, um, and Big Con actually has a pro wrestling tea store. But it, his shirt doesn't say Big Con on it, so I didn't buy that one. I wanted it to have Big Con in big, bold letters across the T-shirt. So uh, I made my own design. I put it up on T Public. I bought it uh, from myself, and then I removed it from my store. So it is no longer available because um, if you guys buy it, he doesn't get the money, and I don't want to try to make money off of the guy's name, especially when I've been, you know, down, you know, borderline mean to the guy, <laughs> you know, uh, you know trying to entertain you guys i uh some can sometimes uh get get to people get to be a little bit mean in some of my humor and uh and he would took the brunt of that so um i immediately took the, sh the shirt down so that way nobody could uh think that i'm trying to make money off the guy i'm not so um but yeah man uh let's go ahead and get to the chat and then i'm gonna get to the play-by-play -play. i want to know what you guys thought of the show uh joseph g cousin joe said that was definitely one of the main events of all time <laughs> yeah uh, Billy from Philly says, great pay-per-view as usual. Was that their longest ever? You know, I don't know. I think we'd have to go to the some of the experts in that. I got the I was assuming that the show would end at 5, which is why. 5 Hawaii Standard Time, so it would be 11 Eastern Standard Time. Uh, that's why I had the that's why I had the um, the feed set up for, for 11 Eastern, um, but they went long, which I'm completely fine with because uh, uh, I, you know, I thought it, I don't mind if it goes long, as long as it's a good show. Um, and they gave me something to talk about. Janice says, I love Josh's heel turn. His character needed this. Everything he said was true. He is the heart and soul of TNA. They're in Canada rooting for another man. This would be a good feud for Hendry. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. Uh, Jaywick 1998. I personally enjoyed the show a ton. I wasn't expecting the main event finished, but if BFG's in London, that is hundred percent the way to go. I love the heel turn. I love the Alexander heel turn. Um, and then uh, we, we got we got a few more. Uh, ten four ten says questionable. Good show, questionable main event. I think that's where I'm at. Um, Alter says main event was wild. I'm not personally too hot about Nick winning, but I'll let them cook. There's plenty of time to drop it between now and BFG. Um, yeah. And then um, let's see. Here here's something I want to get into. Uh, Brandon Crago says the lighting in the arena was crap. The they needed to light the arena a lot, uh, a lot more before the show started. People I spoke with on Twitter said the arena was nice and lit, and TNA lit, dimmed the lights. Yeah, so that was something that people were saying from early on um, that they that they they turned the lights off on the crowd. You couldn't see the crowd, and then I was like, oh, why? Why would they do that? And so whenever I tuned in, I was looking. I was like, they're in a dimly lit arena. There's a ton of people there, um, but you can't see them. Um, so, so that was bad, uh, but they did. I want to say during the Santana Jake something match about halfway through the match, they started slowly bringing the lights up and then by the main event, you could see the entire crowd and it looked like a professional big league setup by the main event, but it took them forever to get there. I'm just like, guys, why can't you do the right thing immediately? Why does it take people take going to Twitter to, to tell you how to fucking produce your show? Like, why do we have to complain to make you guys be better? Like, just be good. Like, why, why can't you just be awesome from the beginning? Um, I know they're kind of a mom and pop operation. They don't have like this huge, this huge crew, but this is exactly the type of stuff that we've been complaining about for years. This is the type of stuff we were complaining about with David Sahadi, the director of the show. We were like, you know, this guy's got to go because they're not, they're not white balancing the cameras. The audio sucks and the lighting is terrible. Well, he leaves and then everything starts to get better, but then they, they revert back to what they've always been tonight with some of the audio, uh, uh the, the production. So for the lighting, it eventually did get better, but like early on it was crap. And then the audio was crap the whole night. You couldn't hear the entrance music. I would have, I, uh, I really, I legit had to like crank up my volume to be able to hear the entrance music because the audio mix was, was weird. Um, 
it's not a professionally ran organization when you do stuff like that. You got to get that audio mix just right. There's a reason why you test this stuff out before you go live. There's a reason why there's a pre-show. The pre-show is where you're supposed to make those mistakes. Um, they they debuted new ring music, new interest music for ABC, and up to the for the life of me, I can't tell you what it sounds like because I couldn't hear it. I legit, I legit couldn't hear it. I think they mixed it a little bit better towards the end, but even like Joe Hendry when he came out, like you could hear his song, but it wasn't like it didn't come through the TV screen as like a big deal when his song hit. You know what I mean? It was like a backdrop to the crowd noise. Now the crowd, I gotta say. The crowd was awesome tonight. Um, as far as pay-per-views go, uh, best TNA crowd I think I've heard in forever. You know, Against All Odds had a really good crowd too, but this this audience like tripled or quadrupled that audience almost. Well, you know, 4,000 people, and they were hot the whole night. Uh, they uh, The crowd was lively. The crowd was awesome. So kudos to the, to the fine folks in Montreal and to the hardcore crew that travels. Um, and, uh, and was able to make the show. Uh, I, I thought they did a great job. Um, 